Hello everyone. Welcome to this session. I am Mr. Praveen Yallapa Kumbar, working as an assistant professor in NTC department of Walton Institute of Technology, Solapur. Now, in this session, we want to see the multiple access techniques for the wireless communications. The learning outcome of this topic is at the end of the session, student will be able to explain the concept of multiple access techniques. The contents of these topics are, first of all, we want to see the introduction, then what is the means of the multiple access, then we want to see the narrowband systems and wideband systems. Now, introduction. In this, multiple access schemes are used to allow many mobile users to share simultaneously a finite amount of a radio spectrum. The sharing of a spectrum is required to achieve high capacity by simultaneously allocating the available bandwidth or the available amount of a channels to multiple users. For high quality communications, this must be done without severe degradation in the performance of the system. In wireless communication system, it is often desirable to allow the subscriber to send simultaneously information to the base station while receiving information from the base station. For example, in conventional telephone system, it is possible to talk and listen simultaneously and this effect called duplexing is generally required in wireless telephone system. Duplexing may be done using frequency or time domain techniques. Frequency division duplexing that is FDD provides two distinct bands of frequencies for every user. The forward band provides traffic from the base station to the mobile and simultaneously the reverse band provides traffic from the mobile to the base station. So in FDD any duplex channel actually consists of a two simplex channel. So out of that two simplex channels one is a forward and second one is a reverse channel and a device called a duplexer is used inside each subscriber unit and base station to allow simultaneous bi-direction radio transmission and reception for both the subscriber and the base station on the duplex channel pair. The frequency separation between each forward and reverse channel is constant throughout the system regardless of the particular channel being used. Now the next concept is TDD that is we will call it as a time division duplexing that will use as time instead of a frequency that is used in a FDD. So here in the time division duplexing we use the time to provide both the forward and the reverse link. So in TDD multiple users share a single radio channel by taking turns in the time domain. Individual users are allowed to access the channel in assigned time slots and each duplex channel has both forward time slot as well as a reverse time slot to facilitate bi-directional communication. If the time separation between the forward and reverse time slot is a small, then the transmission and reception of data appears simultaneously to the users at both the subscriber unit and on the base station side. Now this is a figure number one that consists of A and the B sections. Now in the A that is called as a FDD. That FDD provides two simplex channel at the same time. And in the TDD, the figure B TDD that will provide two simplex time slots at the same frequency. 
Now, in the figure 1 that illustrates FDD and TDD techniques. TDD allows communication on a single channel that is opposed to requiring two separate simplex or dedicated channels and simplifies the subscriber equipment since a duplexer is not required. There are several trade-offs between FDD and TDD approaches. FDD is a gear towards radio communication system that allocate individual radio frequency for each user. Because each trans receiver simultaneously transmits and receives radio signals which can vary by more than 100 dB. The frequency allocation used for the forward and reverse channels must be carefully coordinated within its own system and with out of band users that occupy spectrum between these two bands. Furthermore, the frequency separation must be coordinated to permit the use of inexpensive RF and oscillator technology. So this TDD enables each trans receiver to operate as either a transmitter or receiver on the same frequency and it eliminates the need for separate forward and the request forward and reverse frequency bands. However, there is a time latency created by TDD due to the fact that communications is not a full duplex in the trust scene and this latency creates inherent sensitives to the propagation delays of individual users. Because of the rigid timing required of time slotting, TDD generally is limited to cordless phone or short range portable access. Now this TDD is effective for fixed wireless access where all users are stationary so that propagation delay do not vary in time among the users. Now introduction to multiple access. Frequency division multiple access that is FDMA, time division multiple access that is TDMA and code division multiple access that is CDMA are the three major access techniques used to share the available bandwidth in a wireless communication system. Now these techniques can be grouped as a narrow band and wide band system. So depending upon how the available bandwidth is allocated to the users. So the duplexing techniques of a multiple access system is usually described along with the particular multiple access schemes. Now narrow band system. The term narrow band is used to relate the bandwidth of a signal channel to the expected coherence bandwidth of the channel. In a narrow band multiple axis system, the available radio spectrum is divided into a large number of narrow band channels. The channels are usually operated using the FDD to minimize interference between the forward and the reverse links on each channel. The frequency separation is made as great as possible within the frequency spectrum. While still allowing inexpensive duplexers and a common trans receiver antenna to be used in each subscriber unit. So in a narrow band FDMA, a user is assigned a particular channel which is not shared by the other users in the victimity and if FDD is used, then the system is called FDMA FDD. Now, in a narrowband TDMA, on the other hand, allows user to share the same radio channel but allocates a unique time slot to each user. For narrowband TDMA system, there generally are a large number of a radio channel allocated using either FDD or TDD and each channel is shared using the TDMA. So such a system is called as a TDMA slash FDD or TDMA slash TDD access systems. Wideband systems. In wideband systems, the transmission bandwidth of a signal channel is much greater than the coherence bandwidth of a channel. Thus, multipath fading does not greatly vary the received signal power within a wideband channel and frequency selective fades 
occur in only a small fraction of the signal bandwidth at any instance of a time. TDMA allocates time slots to the many transmitters on the same channel and allows only one transmitter to access the channel at any instant of a time whereas spread spectrum CDMA allows all of the transmitters to access the channels at the same time. So TDMA and CDMA system may use either FDD or TDD multiplexing techniques. In addition of the FDMA, TDMA and CDMA, two other multiple access techniques we want to see here. So there are packet radio that is PR and the space division multiple access that is SDMA. Now we want to see the table number one that shows the different multiple access techniques that is used in a different wireless communication system. So this table number one is a multiple access techniques used in a different wireless communication system. The references for these topics are, thank you.